All opinions expressed by Jose and Ben or any of the guests on this show are solely their opinion and their opinion alone. Their opinions do not reflect the opinions of any other sponsors or other parties involved in the recording of this show. Do not treat any opinion expressed by Jose and Ben as a specific endorsement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy. Their expressions of their opinion on this show is purely for informational purposes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Thriller Bitcoin. Welcome to Thriller Bitcoin. What's going on, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Talking in Bits, where we walk you through Bitcoin bit by bit so we can provide you with the information you need to succeed and persist. Back with episode 39. What's going on, man? 39, bro. It's been a crazy week, man. I'm super yes, bullish. Sir. There's so many things on the news. Yeah. Uh, apparently, stock to flow is not dead. Mm. Prices pumping. Talk about that. What is stock to flow? Things that, let's talk about that a little bit later. Right now, yeah. I wanna, uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling super bullish, and I want to lead off with some music for the listeners. Not the... Um, not the pump it up. Mm-hmm. I do love me some of the pump it up though. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what is it about that song, but it's super catchy. Yep. Uh, but a little bit of something Adam back posted on Twitter. And the really cool thing about this new approach that we're taking is, is you guys could go to the show descriptions and should be able to see these uh, links so you guys can load it up on your Twitter um, and be able to follow along mm-hmm. uh, along while we're speaking about it. Because uh, by the time you get this, uh, or just have some type of reference of what I'm talking about because some people don't know who Adam back is. Um, and some people don't, you know, need the context. Mm-hmm. So let's load this up here. Guys, give us feedback on how the audio sounds. We're still figuring out a better way to be able to capture this without just turning the microphone, but we're working on it. But without further ado, here we go. Profitability, securing network from attacks all simultaneously. This is what I want. You increase profits by lowering cost. And guess what? The cleanest types of energy are also the lowest cost types of energy because it's the most efficient type of energy. They've been shifting towards renewables because it makes economic sense. More than two-thirds of the energy produced in the world waste energy. A lot of the energy that the Bitcoin network is consuming is waste energy. We need to advance ourselves as a species to be better at energy production. It's de-risking construction of renewable energy facilities because it is willing to buy 24-7, 365. And that certainty means that that site gets built. What essentially Bitcoin is, is a currency of energy. Bitcoin has the potential to render obsolete what may be the least environmentally friendly institution of all time, the petrodollar. Point enormous amounts of... So it wasn't necessarily a rap song. So mm-hmm. this is from a... Um, uh, tip is, is the handle here. TIP um, looks like a a, a female. Mm-hmm. Uh, TIP underscore NZ. Um, she basically got that uh, Swan Bitcoin's the Machine Green, which was that documentary that Swan Bitcoin just recently did, and just added to be behind it and kind of chopped yeah, up her yeah, favorite yeah. clips about it. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, I I don't really have much to say on on why it's a no brainer for the energy industry and why this is going forward. Do you have anything to say about it? El Salvador is using volcanic energy. Yeah, to, we're going to get it to that as well. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, this is a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. We, let's talk about it now. Let's just move that topic up now. Yeah, so that's another a, another good reason why this is a no-brainer. I saw yeah. that, um, I don't know, because there's been a lot of countries being tossed around. It might be Brazil. Somebody somebody basically saying that they could use waterfalls. Yeah. And I'm just like, yes, you can. Bro, so well, can the U.S. Well, <laughs> well, that was the conversation I was having. I have a friend in, in uh, who's doing commercial real estate work in Liberia. Yeah. And, you know, we're talking about rivers and streams. That if there's land near it, if you put a device in the water, it's going to harness and capture energy, which can then, you know, power one of those little Bitcoin huts that these dudes are, you know, designing and shipping across the world. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're turning that water into sats every single day based on land that you have. It That's takes incredible, so, bro. It takes so much education to get there, though. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. the other part of it is the the, the heavy lifting. So it's mm. like, now I know I can do this. How am I going to get the team together? The but yeah, it just seems like a no-brainer. I'll pull up the article here. So El Salvador uh, officially mined their first uh, Bitcoin uh, mm-hmm. with volcanic, uh, I'm assuming it's pressure, right? Mm-hmm. Is that what it's from? Heat. Right, okay. Pressure. Um, and let me see if it says here, this is from Coindesk. I'll link it. El Salvador mines first Bitcoin with volcanic energy. Almost 22% of the country's power market is geothermal. So then once again, how is this not a no-brainer? Mm-hmm. That's the question you would ask. And mm-hmm. whatever, if, if, if you know waterfalls or a lot of, you know, moving current of water is big and abundant in the area that you're at, then you can do that. But this just continues this whole why the FUD on on Bitcoin mining is just baloney. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really does nothing worse 
on the contrary, it incentivizes everything the other direction in the good way, in the clean way. And, you know, you and I see these tweets all the time where especially political people going with green agendas and things like this. The, the hypocrisy that you would ignore Bitcoin is very strange. Mm -hmm. But that's the world we live in. The, yeah, uh, don't, don't expect the politicians to uh, change their stance either because, listen, the people that are donating to them are from the big banks. You know what I mean? So they're just mouthpieces. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But, you know, when we're talking about mining from stranded, you know, flare gas, volcanoes, water sources and even on that like that clip that they played she was saying that two-thirds of all energy is wasted and most of bitcoin's renewable energy is coming from wasted energy like it's a no-brainer to turn that into bitcoin well it's a, as we were talking about in the last episode it's a no-brainer if your intentions are good facts right this is if you if you either have power already or your intentions are not towards everybody else winning then this is going to be a hard one for you to swallow yeah. like you're going to have to share if that makes sense Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we all have kids. So, and the post from uh, Bukele, this was like their first like wallet post or whatever from mm -hmm. when they got. So they finally got over a Bitcoin. They um, actually this one only is is point oh one a Bitcoin, and then it was a bunch of other numbers pending or whatever. Oh, dope. Uh, but it's, yeah, it was basically him saying this is our early runs. This is our first Sats accumulation. How many rings do you think they have set up? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, and I'm trying to click on the post, but it just gives me his whole like Twitter feed completely. So mm -hmm. it's not really isolating on one thing. But by now, I'm sure they have, if not a few coins, I'm sure that they've been doing very well with it. it has to be a lot of rigs, dude. Yeah, yeah. Or, or at least the ability to get a lot of rigs, meaning yeah. that, you know, we built the infrastructure and now the next step is to start loading up on rigs. Um, mm. But that's a, a struggle in itself. Uh, still waiting on Compass. I, mm -hmm. I, I know, I'm not, I know I'm, I'm not El Salvador, <laughs> but if you can't get to What's Miners Online. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I had a back bro. and forth. This is random, but we're going to drop it in here anyways. Yeah. So they moved from Telegram to Discord. Yep. All right. So there's a... Um, Which is inconvenient. I think so. Yeah. Because I don't use Discord for anything else. Exactly. So it's very strange. Now I have to download something just to talk to you guys. Right. About and, where's my stuff. And personally, in my experience, I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> Facts. So it's, yeah, you're making the, the resistance. And then to me is, there's always like a... Like a... Like a I guess with everything, I've done this for products too, but I guess it's like the marching band, where it's like, if you say something, here come the troops, here come the, yo, but Compass is doing their best to, I get that, mm -hmm. but I'm also allowed to feel a way. Yeah. Because an example I was given is there was a gentleman that was, I, I, I yo, think, you know what I'm doing? What's up? Just, to, just to interject, if I'm yeah. Compass Mining and I see this as a pain point, if I'm the CEO, I'm going to say, my man, when were you supposed to go online? Yeah. Two months ago? Okay. I'm going to pay you your month, or some percentage of the sats that you would get. You know sure. what I'm saying? There has to be something. Or I'm going to, like, because you're going to get invoiced every month for your bill for yeah. hosting and electric. They need to say, you know, you get three months free, no electric and hosting. Well, we kind of got that. That so, was the original deal. Remember? Was it three months? Well, if you add it up, it was 500 um, for each machine. It's a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. Okay. So if I had two machines going on. So it's probably going to be about three months. Okay. Right? To, to power both of them. Yeah. That's cool. And they gave themselves a, a very credible October 31st deadline. Yeah, yeah. So they're still on. The, and, and my point was is that, um, I don't want to say this because it's the only way I can identify him, but he's the balder guy that works for them. Mm -hmm. uh, bald guy. His name Heiler or something like that. Hamer. Yep. Cool. I got not a little back and forth for him, but I was basically calling out that the last update that they gave was like, if you have a, what, a what's minor, you're fucked. That was literally yeah, my yeah, post. Yeah. I was like, look, if you got a what's minor, you're fucked. Yeah. Right? And then he comes in and tries to do this whole, like, I don't see a what's minor problem here. My man, the problem is, is that you're open facilities left and right, and none of them are taking the what's minor. So right, like, But they're taking other? They're areas? taking the S19s. Mm. And then they said that early on, that some facilities don't accept other types of devices. They only expect mm. Bitmen or something like that. I don't know the logistics of that. Yeah. Uh, I heard some people even make the argument for uh, infrastructure things. Like, oh, the what's minors use certain, whatever. I don't know. But if I'm calling out that as somebody who purchased two what's minors from you guys is not getting anything from this translation, that I feel that you're catering to, a, to the, the VIP packages, the S19s, mm -hmm. I'm allowed to say something. I'm not yeah. saying you have to come and solve my problem because I'm not a baby and you don't need to. Yeah, yeah. But I'm allowed to say that. Here I go. Yeah. I say that one line. Somebody gives me their whole, yo, I've been mining since March and it's been nothing but fantastic. My man, I didn't bring answer back because I think this is a waste of time. But Thanks. my man, if you're listening, if you're watching, 
<laughs> Why does your experience have to be the experience I'm having though? Mm-hmm. Why did you even, but you're not even a, a compass like team member. Why did you sp- maybe write 60 letters or, you know, mm-hmm. to basically explain your experience to, 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 to defend somebody who didn't need defending and to shut down my opinion. Well, I'm mm-hmm. going to give you my experience. Yeah. I bought two minors in July. We're about to be on October 31st. Mm-hmm. And I'm not online. Yeah. And the communication is whack. And I'm missing, not the bull run, because we know we're just getting started there. But I'm missing a good opportunity, especially when the China hash thing happened, to be online and getting some sets, mm-hmm. which is what I went to you for. Yeah. So please don't question me, anybody, if to me, y'all messaging is just all marketing. It's all talk. It's all yeah. hype. Just like the pleb community thing, just like all this stuff and all that. I understand that things happen. And I'm not expecting you to do anything more than the offer you gave. But if the community that you're putting together is that type of community where I can't say, yo, I'm having a shitty experience, mm-hmm. I, I don't need to be a part of that. Yeah. And, and, and then they're always in there like, yo, we're about to do some spaces. Hey, listen, man, fuck your spaces. How about you send what's minor people a separate email that explains to them why their machines are unique, education, mm-hmm. why it's a problem, and what the agenda is for that. Because you want to know what the last email I got was? S19s are going live in New Mexico. That's like uh, Florida is about to get approved. That's another spot. We don't know if Florida could take what's minors yet, though. Right? Like a lot of communication about the mm-hmm. S19. The S19 people know what their next steps are. Me? But the what's minors are in the dark. October 31st. That's yeah. what I know. And then I told that Mr. Hyler dude, come October 31st, one of us is going to be correct. It's yeah. going to be you or it's going to be me. Yeah. Hopefully it's not me. Yeah. But how, how if- often can you give free months away? Yeah, if if uh, it's a problem, if things go according to plan, like the the rigs that I've gotten online, they've always got them on early. So hopefully they hit you up. Hey, October twenty sixth. Like, hey, Jose, I've been patient. That one line where I said the what's minor seems to be a problem. Yeah, um, was the only thing I've ever commented about this thing besides this podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm patient, dude. Yeah, like it's what I'm. I'm I'm of the breed of the type that that feel extremely fortunate to be in the in the position to be able to even buy one of these things, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not kicking and screaming or whatever. But once they again, could do they, they could, could do, do better. better. Yeah, they could do better, yeah. and they could just stop being so salesy and more, you know, nose to the ground, right? Meaning that like, yo, I don't need to see you on Discord talking. I need yeah. to see action. I need to see some results. Yeah. And if what's minor is a problem, what you told me it was not. I beg to differ because you sold me a device that at the moment is not supported by any of your places. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. That's an issue. That's um, a, and he told me it's not a problem. This is like, yeah. he, he's not leadership, but what is he? He's front facing. He's client facing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a what's minor with them. That's um, a problem. But it went online, you know, earlier this year. But a company that prides themselves on education. Yeah. Right, supposedly about mining. Mm-hmm. How come you can't explain to me why these other places won't get it? Unless right. it's a contractual thing that you just can't bring up. Yeah. And if it isn't, say it. You got you to say I mean? you can't disclose but it. Address it thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah. The only address that I've seen and that I got personally was, we don't have a what's minor problem. I beg to differ. Yeah. I just gave you a bunch of reasons why you do. Mm-hmm. October 31st, we're going to come find We're going to find out. And I kind of got the gut feeling that it's going to be, well, they string you along. here's a few more months. Or mm-hmm. here's another proposition. Yeah, which yeah. is going to be you can take them if you want. That's not solving my problem, and that's not why I went to you. Yeah. So uh, I came across another small mining farm. Um, probably someone who does what Tarantula does, just with their own like facility. You know what I mean? That's what you need to get. I, can, I, I came across a thread. It was a dude. He was like, "Yo, I stumbled upon this deal. Um, really interesting story. He got seller financing to buy the facility, so the old owner." Uh, is still getting paid and he's still kind of involved and yep. uh, he's able to take over and they they got a ton of rigs and I think you can buy rigs from them. I think they'll host them for you and, you know, like a compass mining in its, in its you know, infancy. And so, yeah, there has to be competition in this space Yeah, because um, competition makes markets flourish. Yeah, yeah. And, and if I knew where I could put my miners now, I would absolutely take them back. Easy. Yeah, he's in yeah. Texas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you could probably pull up on a facility. I got to see. And so. it's yeah, it's just a bunch of different things because yeah. I'm so paranoid, especially as a Bitcoiner, that it's like, well, I have no verification, no proof that you're not actually running my machine. Mm-hmm. And then what happens if my machine breaks six months down the road? You're going to say, oh, it was just its time. Right. But when it wasn't, oh, this whole time you've been waiting, we've been pumping the shit out of this thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know that. Yeah. Am I paranoid? Maybe. Uh, I think 
I I have the same concerns. Yeah. So now I can't even get an email explaining anything about my. There's no what's minor problem. Apparently, I'm I'm seeing things. Mm-hmm. Apparently, mm-hmm. according to this gentleman. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Once again, I'm a very blessed individual to be um, early in Bitcoin and be able to make these moves. So I, I'm not kicking and screaming. Um, life could be much worse, especially in the Bitcoin universe. So mm-hmm. um, Compass Mining, get it together. Uh, I'm going to cheer some stuff up with another track we got here. <laughs> Let's go. Because that was a little bit of a of a rant on, on Compass Mining, but man. Listen, you got to hear it. Yeah, but the thing is, is that like, I'm not paying like a few hundred bucks for this thing. We we put up some cash for these things. Mm-hmm. These mm-hmm. things are not cheap. So. All, two, for, for context, guys, two, two of those miners is over 10 grand. You know what I mean? Closer to 20. I'm about to say, so, yeah, that's so, being nice. So we're talking about 20 grand, guys. Uh, this, this is a big deal. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, you know, 20 grand that they probably spent months ago when I gave it to them. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, they good. They for fun logistics, bought whatever they need to do. Company, I'm out. Company parties, my dude, you know. I'm out. We Drinks pay for, on the company. Yeah, we pay for the, 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 the office prostitute. <laughs> Drinks on Jose. That's crazy stuff. So yeah, um, so to wrap up that whole section, we did talk about mining, first volcanic mining, hopefully these waterfalls go online. This is just another example of why Bitcoin's inevitable, why it's already won, uh, because there's nothing else even in the ballpark that can do it better. Mm. So there's no competition. Um, and, and it does it so everybody wins if you partake. If you partake in Bitcoin, you win. That seems to be the whole thing. Um, not too many things you partake in with everybody else and still win. This is one of those great things. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's go to this other track here. We thought it was hilarious. Um, I think it's hilarious. This was posted by Bitcoin is Saving. Um, and it's funny. Yes, sir. That means that it is not illegal. <laughs> It's another minute of that, but you guys mm. got to see it. We'll link it in the show notes. It's basically just the nastiness that is politics, the federal mm. government, fiat, um, all the way down to AOC's dress. <laughs> mm. uh, it's it's one of those videos. Um, I love the creators, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitcoin creators are, are probably some of the best creators. Out yeah, there. I downloaded one of their videos. I forget who posted it. I posted it to Facebook, but then Facebook muted it for the music choice. And I was just like, man. That's what they said. This video is like it doesn't have the same effect without the music. No, that that's a perfect lean right. in. That's a perfect lean in to say. Uh, let's talk about the Facebook hack. Yeah, yeah. So Facebook went down. You're a Facebook user. I am not. How did that go? Yeah, uh, Facebook was down for like six hours or so. I, I want to preface this with uh, in 2019. Not to be the conspiracy guy, this is a fact. <laughs> in 2019, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funded, sponsored, hosted an event called. Event 201, which yep. simulated with world leaders uh, from everywhere what a coronavirus-like pandemic would be like. Sure. And then it happened. Uh, in in the next pandemic simulation kind of drill they ran was on the cyber world, right? And Facebook goes down for X amount of hours and, you know, allegedly over a billion people's information has been extracted. Yeah. So is it a psyop? Did it really happen? You know, what is it? I don't know, but Facebook so, was down so, for six hours. So you think it's the powers that be that are that are doing this? Yeah, I, I'm thinking. Um, I, I'm I'm just saying like that's that's a thing. That's a thing, right? They're, I didn't know they're that. talking about cyber. That, yeah, the, the, it's going to be the cyber pandemic now. Yeah, I knew about the so, first thing, the the yep. COVID prediction or not prediction simulation. So, yeah, right. Uh, I didn't hear about the cyber one. Um, I, I, I'll spin it on the other on the other end. I think those people are, are powerless. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I hope that's the case. Yeah, I think those people <laughs> are, are, are entering into an environment yeah. um, where the new predator 
um, is, is a more complex predator. Mm -hmm. uh, they're scared of this predator. And when you see stuff like this, um, it's just that predator strutting his shit and basically Fast. saying, this is what we got. We got you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'd like that to be the case and not the other way around. I mean, it's scary either way, but yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it's a, it's a, um, a, it's a death sentence to to the life that we've uh, uh, jumped into, right? This mm -hmm. whole digital connected life, to where we rely on everything to be connected at all times. This is the um, the payback for that for mm -hmm. that that con convenience, and I think it's just starting with Facebook. Um, the further removed, the the less that it matters. I'm one of those people. You know how I feel about Facebook. So to me, is all right. Good for you. You mm -hmm. guys are down now. Bootstrap it and get back up because you have the resources to do so. Or get the fuck out the way mm -hmm. because we already know that you guys won't make it unless you change your model somehow, some way. And the only the, the only problem with big behemoths like Facebook, you can't move the shit. So yeah. it's done. It's over. There won't be another Facebook. Facebook will die, um, and they can't shift because they've already plotted too much. Especially their whole ad platform, they can't do anything about that. So they're gonna try to adapt. They're gonna try to embrace these lightning things, these new things. But overall, they're too big to be able to change completely. Uh, and they will die. And this is just the start of it. Uh, Google will be next. Um, you know, uh, you, you've brought up trying to look at Catalyst and stuff like that. Maybe you want, might want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, that I, I'm not saying Apple's any better. I have an iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just one of those things. Like, I, I think these people are trying to show stuff. And to take down a software giant over a hardware giant, because anybody who knows knows that Apple is a hardware giant uh, that does software. And Google is a software giant that does some hardware. Um, I would go for the software giant if I was trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. uh, and Apple may get hit too. They have been hit. All these companies have been hit. But expect Google to be the face, the next one. Um, and Facebook was the the badge of honor for these people that are doing this stuff. Um, yeah, Coinbase. Coinbase also yeah. went. That's get your coins off exchanges. Man, if Facebook is like the upper tier for hackers, I'm mm -hmm. gonna go with Coinbase being like the low hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like your first shot at hacking yeah. or something like. Yeah. Yeah, get your no keys. We talk about it all the time. Coinbase mm -hmm. again, a bunch of information. Um, they seem to thrive during this though. Like people still yeah. seem to just be like, okay, or be in denial. Do, do you ever have thought about that? Why yeah. does Coinbase keep surviving? How does that happen? They're on. They're on a really big level. Um, Are they? Where I mean, they're. I mean, allegedly Tesla was buying through them. Interesting. Yeah, you know I mean, billion dollars of Bitcoin. What's the commission on that? What's the fees on that? You know, what I mean, that pays your that pays for a lot of things. I thought like a Tesla would have so, went to like a Nidig or something like that. Though. They That's well, I think it might be like Coinbase in conjunction with Nidig or something. Yeah. Um, but it's some like corporate structure that they have on the back end. Um, but you got to figure how many corporations and big businesses and small countries are kind of doing that that we don't know about. How tone deaf do so, you got to be as a as a billionaire to say, "Hey, they continually get hacked for keys. Here's my let money." Me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that's and how I, tone deaf you got to be. Gotta wonder how how they're securing Bitcoin. Not very well. You know what I mean? Well, but not not Coinbase, but like Tesla and other people. Okay. Well, I, I was gonna say too. Um, I I don't think the uh, the Coinbase got hacked for Bitcoin, did it? Or was uh, it just the information? Uh, information, but I mean, people are breaking into one on one accounts. Okay. So like people are going into I do individual. Have it. I don't know why I pulled it up. Yeah, uh, people are going into individual accounts and wiping them. Yeah, so. uh, it says hackers uh, robbed thousands of Coinbase customers using SMS two FA. We will talk about this before the show. Let's talk about it. Break By the way, it down. you guys are about to get some early access before yeah. the show because we be having these fire conversations during uh -huh. the show uh, before the show. Um, yeah, so don't <laughs> don't do an SMS two FA. Mm -hmm. That's just a no brainer. Somebody can call your telephone provider and hack basically your SIM, uh, get it sent to a different phone number, and receive that SMS reset or that two FA to get into the account. Easier than that, I can download a text message app. Right. And, and, well, they would have take to get your, number your over phone Wi -Fi. number. Right. They would have to get your that S uh, that message to go to their number. Mm -hmm. um, or, like I said, they could the the most common way. I don't want to say easy because I've never done it. I don't know. The most common way is basically try to get to your phone provider to say, "Hey, my phone is lost. I need to swap to this new IMEI." Mm -hmm. They'll swap the IMEI, and all they need is five minutes, right? So it's like they'll swap the IMEI. Uh, once they swap the IMEI, they'll get this code. They'll get into the account. They'll reset the 2FA from inside the account. Boom. That's how you go. That's why you don't do the SMS. You have to either do like a YubiKey, which is just a physical device um, that you're like when you're presently, you can put in and, and unlock. Um, or you need to do a Google Authenticator. Uh, there's a few other Authenticator apps. Uh, these apps are device specific. There's a drawback to that. If you lose your device, you lost all your 2FA keys. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with that. Uh, but it's extremely secure. I probably I, I would say 2FA is that last layer of defense. If yeah. you don't have 2FA on your account, you're probably going to get hacked at some point. 
Yeah, I like Google Authenticator. I do too. Um, I mean, simple. That's yeah, what it needs to do. and I like for password management. I use uh, LastPass, and uh, they pretty much encrypt and create new passwords and yeah, you know, manage that across mobile and, and a mobile uh, desktop laptop. Yeah, they've been um, um, league leaders for a while. Yep. Yeah, Those yeah, they've been. Out, I've had them for like ten years. Um, you know, they're growing. That's but, how uh, Odell her add to that post that transaction history and home addresses were hacked. Coinbase. Oh man. Home at the, the hackers that, so, no. home address. Yep. My concern is five years, ten years from now. Like right now, dudes will rob drug dealers. In the future, they're robbing Bitcoin holders. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah. And like or kidnapping kids. Like that'll be nuts. No, yeah, that, that's the whole reason. But behind uh, for especially newer people, don't tell people your stack. Yeah. Don't don't really talk about the stack. Like that's not people will ask you naturally, but that's not a question to be asked. Um, and it's not a disrespectful thing. It's just that you need to be careful for what this thing's about to do. Uh, I think I was talking to my wife about that earlier today, which is like, the world will change. People will start seeing that this thing is valuable and know that you have it and will mm. try to get it. Uh, right now, I, you know, the likelihood of somebody showing up to your house to take your hardware wallet is probably very slim to none. Mm. Uh, but it does happen. And when you're freaking KYCing yourself and these home addresses are going out there, um, then you get fucked. So Bro, the hack- they, they can pinpoint whales. The hackers know that users withdraw addresses so they can track past and future self-custody transactions. That's when you just start, what, a new new cold storage? Uh, that's when we can get into our next thing, which is the yeah. Sparrow Wallet. <laughs> yeah, let's start. Perfect. Uh, yeah, but KYC um, is very important. Uh, follow Odell. Um, there's a lot better, do, and I don't like to rank people, but there is like legit security experts out there. And then Odell is a good representation for the average person to go in. Um, but, uh, for a while there, there's been a few coin join instances. Um, you know, Wasabi does coin join. Uh, Samurai does Whirlpool. Samurai also does Ronin Node and a few other things. It's like a stack that you use together. Mm-hmm. I don't know much about that product besides that their coin join implementation is called Whirlpool. And um, Sparrow Wallet, which I've had my eye, eye on for a little bit, but now gave me a reason to go download it, just added their implementation of uh, literally Samurai's Whirlpool. Got it. So I wasn't. I like this because instead of just saying, "Yo, I like what you're doing," I'm just gonna code something similar and then start from scratch. Um, Craig Raw, actually, which was the developer of Sparrow, actually was like, "Nah, I worked with the Samurai team. Like, I told them, you know, what I was doing, and they helped me implement this." Now, this is something that so I it's want. like a collaboration. Yeah, it yeah. is, and he's giving them much love, and they're gonna be part of future updates and stuff. Fire. But this is the thing that I want newer people to understand when they say Bitcoin is complex. UI fixes complexity. It's one of those things that we've known for a long time. The reason you love your phone, the reason you customize things is because UI solves uh, so many things for your brain. It just basically understimulates the brain and gives you signal instead of noise. So what Sparrow's been able to do is, I like desktop wallets. Mm -hmm. I think they're much better than phone wallets because in a desktop wallet, I'm able to interact with Bitcoin. So I'm able to see return addresses. I'm able to see different addresses. I'm able to label these addresses as such. I'm able to organize them. Uh, when it comes to coin uh, coin joining or Whirlpool, there's four different steps. Craig, I don't know if it, this is the way it is on Samurai, um, but there's a, a, a there's a regular deposit wallet, there's a pre-mix wallet, and I don't want to get too technical in it. Um, there's a post-mix wallet, and there's a bad funds wallet. I think it's bad something else, right? Mm-hmm. So through all these wallets, it basically goes from your regular hot wallet to a premix, right? Before the before the whirlpool, before the coin join, it gives you a UTXO after, that's the postmix. And then when it sends you your change back, it smartly sends it to a bad wallet. Bad not meaning that you can't go pay your bills with it or transfer it over here or send it to somebody. Bad meaning don't mix this UTXO with the postmix UTXO. Incredible how in Sparrow Wallet you can see this. Yeah. Step by step, there's tabs. Um, uh, Craig has really nice prompts that come up when you're about to move to the next section. Mm-hmm. When you're about to broadcast your, um, your, your, your Whirlpool transaction, you can actually see like a graph that says, this is your UTXO. This goes here. Free goes here. This goes there. UI allows you to understand Bitcoin in an, in an incredible way. Fun fact, with Sparrow Wallet, you can set testnet. And you could have as much fun as possible on testnet. You could send 19 Bitcoin to your wallet. You could send it back and forth. You could play around. You could whirlpool on testnet. So you could try it out that way. And what testnet is, is 
Uh, basically, you don't lose anything. There's no funds on the line. It's all made up. There is a mining schedule. I think it's every five minutes and not every 10 minutes. You know, it kind of structures mm-hmm. the same, but it doesn't, um, it's not real. It's not real funds or whatever. Gotcha. Um, Sparrow Wallet's it. Take me back on a Sparrow Wallet. Uh, yeah. It sends it to a bad wallet. Let's talk about that. Sure. Is that, is that a, like a hot wallet? Is that a cold storage? They're all hot wallets. Okay. Right. So uh, another cool feature of Sparrow Wallet and, and for anybody who's listening, who's tried Samurai, um, this could all be from Samurai and I'm just saying the Sparrow features. I don't mm-hmm. know. Uh, but another really cool feature on Sparrow is, is um, you can leave it mixing. And then after a certain amount of mixes, you can automatically send to cold storage. Gotcha. Fantastic. That's a huge feature because this is a problem that a lot of people don't think about. They do anonymous coin join stuff, right? Or Whirlpool stuff. And then they send to that, to a UTXO and then send a different UTXO, which pretty much correlates them and blows their anonymous behavior. Now, it's still clean. It's just you're already starting a new track record that people can track you. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, the process is required for you to to separate these funds um, and you could just send it back to yourself. They're all hot wallets and I did this this morning actually. So, um, so like, I guess when it goes to those four wallets, um, step by step, by the way, it doesn't, yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't go immediately to those. Okay. Wallets. So where does a hundred percent of it land in the bad wallet or is it spread out? Well, when you're depositing into your spare wallet, yep. it's a deposit. It, it says yep. deposit wallet. So gotcha. that's your main one. That's where you see your addresses. You can mm-hmm. spend there, right? And then there's a really cool button where it's like, you, once again, why I love uh, desktop wallets. You can see all your transactions. Um, I'm sorry. You can see all your UTXOs. Uh, and then from there, you select all the UTXOs you want, and you can start mixing. Gotcha. Right? And now what mixing does is now is it's going to take those funds from the, um, from the deposit wallet, from the hot wallet, mm-hmm. and send um, it. It splits it. Right? So there's like a fee for, for the, uh, the coordinator is what they call it, when a whirlpool. So there's a fee, which is usually 5%. There's the clean money, and then there's a transaction for the bad for the for the return money, right? So in the example, let's just round to 180,000 sets, right? So 100,000 sets are gonna get cleaned. That'll get sent to the premix. Uh, 5,000 sets would be the fee that would go to the address of the coordinator, and then the 80,000 that's changed, or the 75,000 because you take off the coordinator fee. The 75,000 go to uh, a return address, which is in the bad wallet. Gotcha. And then you have to wait for this transaction. So that's to like the change. Yeah. Well, you always have a return address. Gotcha. But um, with a whirlpool, it knows specifically to send it to a bad wallet. Gotcha. Instead of just giving you your next address, because the way the return addresses work is, it always just gives you your next address up. That's how it sends it back to you. That doesn't work though, because if I got clean UTXOs and you returned shitty ones, you just crash that whole wallet. Now it's not clean. Compromise. Yeah. Right. So it smartly makes these four wallets for you and navigates through those four wallets to keep it all separate. And what you end up with is a, is a wallet with change that's bad and a wallet with clean sets. This is the beautiful part. You get the dirty change, you send it back to the deposit address, and you start this motherfucker all over again. Mm-hmm. Right? And, then, and, and then the art of whirlpooling is you can mix once and that's cool, um, but like real anonymous behavior is mixing four or five times. This is the real cool power whirlpool that I hated about CoinJoin. Um, or, or, or Wasabi's implementation. Um, well, Wasabi, I needed uh, 0.1 Bitcoin to step to, to get in the game. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was a pretty good. Actually, I was gonna yeah. ask, what's the entry? This one you can go as low as 100,000 sets because I'm, I'm it, doing that today. It just depends on on uh, what other people are coordinating, right? Mm-hmm. So it may not be there, but yeah, you can go as low as 100,000 sets, um, and, and it just works beautifully. It's just laid out really well. You have to wait for the the transaction to broadcast. Uh, and there is, uh, in order to mix properly, um, how do I explain this? So you can mix once and you're good. You can now send that to a clean cold storage or whatever. Uh, but if you want to continue to mixing, you never pay the fee again. Dope. Super dope. I like you, that. You pay the fee the first time. You keep the UTXO inside of that post mix wallet. Mm-hmm. And smartly enough, you have to keep your computer on. Smartly enough, every time they start a new Whirlpool round, they'll grab your UTXO, contribute to that Whirlpool with no fees to you. Gotcha. And mix it a second time. Gotcha. And mix it a third time. You have to leave your computer on. Uh, Craig was even saying, which is the developer was even saying, hey, if you really want to be anonymous, this is something that you like, kind of like let cycle for like a week or two. Mm-hmm. Because now you've entered numerous different blocks on the blockchain at different points in time. So like you're just getting super anonymous here. So that's as easy as just running in the background. Craig does a really good job. I'm, I'm really blown away by Sparrow. Yeah. Uh, Craig does a really good job of even giving you an application for Windows, for Mac. That'll keep your system running 
in the background. So I never thought we'd be at a point in time where we're talking about how to rinse digital money. How to, yeah, no. This um, is crazy. But it, 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 we use like dirty terms because we're from yeah. the streets, right? But like even the example I gave a few weeks ago where I was like, yeah, when you're doing business, you don't want people knowing how much you're bringing in. Apple mm-hmm. doesn't want people knowing how much they get for iPhones. Like, yeah. And if I could track that address, I'm going to know yeah, how much they... So like it's it's essential just to be fair in, yeah. in, 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 a, in a world of business and exchange. How so, how does the government or whoever you know is the opponent uh, and wants to tax this? How are they going to beat Taproot and that? I don't know, man. I, I I don't know. I'm not good on the on the on the political side or, or, or regulation side because yeah. I always default to you can't do shit. I, that's, that's from a technical standpoint. How are they like? That's what I'm thinking. You how can't are they do figure shit. It out? You would have to set really strict rules, and then this is why. If you read Sovereign Individual and all that stuff and do the regular, typical orange pill thing experience, this is why you know that it, it, governments won't exist because there's nothing that they can do about it. So now they're going to have to cower back and then hide to their previous position. They're either going to do two things. They're going to overpower, meaning that they're just going to wipe us all out, or, they, or they're going to have to backtrack and be the old government, which is, no, 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 no. We're just here to to make sure liberty's all set and we, we, we're not getting intervened or whatever because... They're going to keep dropping regulation and legislation and more and more people are just going to be like, why? I'm just going to go do that. That's easier. Why? And then they can't do anything. So once again, force, you wipe everybody the hell out Mm -hmm. or you just retreat and make your little bit of ends meet where you can make it. Back up. Governments won't exist. The state wants it all, man. Yeah, there'll just be smaller governments. Uh, uh, It would just be lead to a smaller government. But that's where we're heading and that's the trajectory that we're heading. But they can't do anything. I'm blown away by this stuff. But shout out to Craig. Because, listen, these are complex things, right? These things, and even as I'm saying it, I'm thinking about it like nobody's going to know what the fuck I'm talking about. But if you have really good UI, it's something that a cell phone wallet cannot do for you. If you have a really good UI, you understand that you don't just have one address. You have numerous addresses. Mm. You understand that you could derive as many wallets from that private key. You, you just see it. You understand the whirlpool process from post to pre. You understand UTXOs. If you don't get UTXOs, you got to really do some homework. UTXOs are the fundamental aspect of transactions. They, they are the transaction. Uh, but how they can sit there as unspent and how you can manipulate them and replace by fee and time locks and all these things. Um, yeah, shout out to Spiral Wallet. Yeah, I got to check that out. Yeah, my go-to pull, pull wallet. Pull it up on a desktop. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah uh, PGP signature. I tell people that all the time. If you don't know how to PGP signature, it's going to take if you find bad videos, maybe like in two hours, to it's going to be worth the two hours. Mm. You figure it out one time. Hopefully, you could get the first video to give you a good tutorial. Uh, probably YouTube, anywhere, Google. Um, and kind of go... If, if you're on Mac, I, I would just do um, uh, Homebrew and just get GB, a GPG suite. But that's just a personal recommendation. Um, check your signatures for wallets, uh, especially with CoinJoin wallets. I mean, that's even worse. Uh, but be blown away. Um, by how you can see, and you can go on the mempool and actually see this transaction split out into like this person gets this, this person gets this, this person gets that, and it's all anonymous. It's all mixed up. Um, super cool. Track it every step of the way. Taproot's going to be a different monster. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I can't wait to see that roll out. Yeah, I, I, sounds like Sparrow's probably going to be on top of that, man. I'm telling you, um, I've had my eye on Sparrow for about six months because I heard they do multi sig very well. Mm. So I'm like, okay, this Pay caravan. Attention. Yeah, you know, there's other places to, do, but you know, and then it, that wasn't enough for me because I don't interact with um, cold storage as often, right? Because why, you know, that's the point. You don't interact with it, so they're not hot wallets to me. So, but then it was just this is just a no brainer. I was frustrated with Wasabi. I was able to coin join a few times with them, and it was smooth. But visually, I had to know about Bitcoin to get it. Yeah, and that buying fee is just. Mm-hmm. Like how often do you have ten million sats? Mm-hmm. Not me. I ain't balling like that. Yeah, boy. Um, so yeah. Um, and and and, and uh, Samurai Whirlpool. I hear it's the same way over there. You get on Android, by the way. I'm gonna check uh, that Sa- out. Samurai's on there. Um, oh, I have Samurai. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So th- they have it built into the app. Yep. Uh, I don't know how good it is on the app, but I haven't used it yet. I, I but I did download it and get a wallet. Oh, going you and may not even up. need Sparrow, dude. See, I had to do. Yep. I had to go over there because I don't have. I have a Raspy. I don't have a Ronin node. Nor do I want to get rid of my Raspy. Um, and I also don't have Android, gotcha. so I couldn't get that. Uh, mm-hmm. And CoinJoin is the same thing. There's an app called Coin uh, CoinCase that has CoinJoin built in, and Wasabi, and there's a few other versions. But once again, I just didn't like that experience. And if it's a UI thing, uh, if it's a Samurai thing, right? Like they just made a great product, 
Um, I think it's Craig, man. I think Sparrow is just laid out really well. When you load up the, the, at the wallet for the first time, it literally tells you, hey, man, what are you recovering? What are you doing? Have you multi-sig? What you got? Uh, and it's like, oh, you want to make one? Let's make one here. And it's really, really intuitive. I like that. Shout out to him, man. Um, yeah, Wasabi's been dropped from the... I mean, I still have a bunch of wallets because you can never get enough addresses. Um, but yeah, I, like, I, I wanted to start getting really deep into the anonymous behavior. And Sparrow made it much easier for me to consume that information. I like that. Let's talk about uh, never having enough addresses. Why yeah. is it important to create new addresses? Um, it's for that anonymous factor um, as well. Um, if you can track an address, you can see how many sats have been sent to it. Um, so it's not just a good practice. So by default, um, HD wallets, which somebody's going to kill me on this one. I think it's BIP45. I, I could be wrong. So um, these wallets allowed for every time you get a brand new address to be able to derive from a private key. So basically... In a simple way, you get like unlimited keys. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. unlimited addresses, not keys. Sorry, uh, unlimited addresses or whatever. So once that kind of kicked off, it became a standard that Bitcoin automatically returns to your next address in line, and it's not good practice, even if you can see the UTXO to reuse it. Gotcha. To re yeah. Let's be practical about this. If uh, if I'm hiring you for a service, you want to get paid in Bitcoin. Um, where should I send from, and where should you receive? Oh, that's complicated. Um, <laughs> it could be as easy. Uh, like, would it be smart to buy sats on Cash App and send it to your wallet? To send it to my wallet? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Okay. What do you no, mean? no. I just mean like on my end, is that a safe thing to do? And then like on your end, you would probably receive in some kind of hot wallet, and then send a cold. Yeah, I mean, let's do like a you know, um, if uh, how much money we're talking? We're talking about like a few fifty bucks. Oh yeah, send it to a wallet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, send it to a, like a hot wallet. Yeah, but if you're talking about like you're hosting like a fundraiser event and you mm -hmm. want people to continuously keep donating, mm -hmm. um, I would just do, I would just get like a a pay to script hash address, which is, um, it's it's a multi sig pretty much. So I would gotcha. get that one address that continuously, um, continuously can take the deposit right and not change unless it gets spent from, right. So now the 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 uh, the event is over, um, you go cash out the sats or whatever. The next time you throw the event, you're not going to use that previous address again. You're going to get the next one in line. And that's the one you're going to start giving to right now. Gotcha. Um, I, I guess it's a, it's a shameless plug, but if you go to the Unchained Capital's dashboard, um, what happens there is that it's that if you spend from your multi-sig, like a lot of people were to, um, and, and, and I'm a victim to this, which is why I say it, you, you would save an old address like on a note, and then you would probably like hand that out and use it for a swan or use it for whatever the hell you want. The problem with that is, is that as soon as you spend from your, from your multi-sig transaction, you go to the next address. So now you're sending to an old address. Got you. You can recover that with Caravan, with Sparrow, with devices that allow you to see all the UTXOs. Mm -hmm. But imagine where you get a wallet or you've recovered your multi-sig wallet, but they only read the total at the top, the, the most current address. You're going to be missing a shitload of Bitcoin. You're going to panic. So the, reusing addresses is not a smart idea. Um, thankfully... Most apps, most wallets do that for you. They yeah. run through the, they cycle through the addresses and don't respend any addresses. Multi sigs are a rare exception where it's like, think about a multi sig, in my opinion, as a bucket. And it's like, you could throw as much in there as long as you don't take anything out. Mm -hmm. Then when you take something out, then just get a different address and keep it rocking and rolling. Yeah. Because those three uh, uh, private keys, those three public keys are derived from private keys. Thus, for they will always make new addresses. Entropy will always happen from those three public keys. So um, it's a process. Most apps do all this for you, though. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm getting on a tangent. I don't even need to be on. Mm -hmm. Most people will never have to deal with this. But simple 101, don't reuse addresses. You yep. don't have to. Yeah. You can get a, a, like an unlimited amount of addresses. Mm -hmm. And then even if you were to run out of unlimited, you could just derive a different wallet with a different private key and get yeah. another million. So uh, when people talk about that's another thing that I should bring up. When you derive keys... Um, you change the dev path, and the easiest way to explain it is uh, bank accounts. So you have one hard hardware wallet, that's your account or whatever. So now you're going to change your dev path to one increment. So it'll be like, for Bitcoin, it's like four or five, uh, um, I think that's an apostrophe, no, semicolon. Either way, it'll be like four, five, zero, zero, zero for your main account. Mm -hmm. To derive another private key wallet from that main account, you would just change your dev path to uh, four five zero zero one. It's like adding a checking account to your right. already existing checking but account. But that account right there derives from your original private key. Yep. Right. Meaning that it's a child of that key. Meaning that it has its own private key, so it has its own addresses, its own set of whatever. 
but you can always recover that child with its parent. Gotcha. Incredible shit. I like that. Ah, it's mind-boggling yeah. stuff. I, at least to me, I'm, mm-hmm. this is the type of stuff that's just like, you know, when you like put a puzzle together and it's like, voila, it just works. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it didn't just work. It took a lot of trial and error. But this is where we got into the point where it's like dudes like me could just geek out about super incredible advancements. And, mm-hmm. and, and all this stuff happens without you having to trust it. Like, I, I remember when I first started interacting with Bitcoin, it was like, and you, you, we've talked about this. It's like, my Bitcoin's not showing up. Like, can I trust this? Like, we come from this world of like, I got played. They played me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I still check stuff, you know, habit wise, like addresses, check addresses. Um, but I, I, once I hit a button, I feel 1000% comfortable that this system is just going to handle it the way it's supposed to. I had to load up my cold storage to uh, send some transactions. And uh, yeah, I'm signing transactions on my ledger. And like, I don't have to worry about this. So yeah. I know it's confirmed. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, man. I do want to bring up that point. Somebody uh, asked me um, on, a, on a DM on Twitter. Um, they reached out to me and they were like, um, uh, signing, signing is supposed to be with, with your seeds. Uh, why can a device sign without you having to input the seeds? Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't know. I, I've talked to this person for a little while, so I, I can see why they felt comfortable asking me that. But it was a random left field question. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, well, who the hell told you you sign with seed phrases? You yeah. Uh, but anyways, I just try to answer as best I can, and I'll try to answer for anybody who's curious. Um, but your device, I guess, is the, the pin passphrase to your device. You know, the device is basically saying, if Ben can get through this pin, he's approving this private key to sign. So the reason you don't have to put in your seed phrases is, is because the device signs for you by you putting the passphrase in. Matter of fact, the seed phrase is not intended to sign. The seed phrase is intended to recover. And the only reason they're words is because nobody can remember their private keys. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're super long, intricate numbers. I don't remember if it's 256 bytes or something like that. But they're you know numbers that have been you know shot 256 yep. and, and hashed down. Um, so somebody in one of the BIPs basically said, hey, well, we can actually hash these into readable human words. Uh, so that's why you get seed phrases. But if anybody ever tells you to sign with a seed phrase, run for your fucking life. Mm-hmm. You're getting played. Mm-hmm. Um, the device um, with your passphrase is your approval saying that you're willing to sign with your private key. And the point of your seed phrase is, is that if the device goes bye-bye, you can just recover and then sign with this new phrase. device. Exactly. Um, so the devices are signing, but they're signing because they hold the private key and you are authorizing the signature of your private key. You're actually signing with a combination of things, but you're signing with your XPUB, which is derived from a private key. That's super important to Bitcoin. So just pay attention to those things. This is long-winded transaction talk, but there's a lot going on under the hood. Yeah, man. I like it. A lot of cool stuff going Advancements. on. Advancements. Yeah, all the time. Um, there's a point of sale that you can make for eight bucks, a POS system for Lightning that I saw that. Bro, that's fire. Eight bucks. <laughs> well, my, so my pops opened the business yep. and I'm like, you know, it'd be dope to stack sats. And yeah. like, or, or how does a business do that? You know what I mean? Uh, you just get a node. Uh, you could do strike, but yeah. that's the KYC way of doing it. You could just mm-hmm. get a node and have people stream uh, directly to you. But this thing looks like a cold card. It's literally like an $8 setup. Mm-hmm. And you could take light- Lightning payments even without the internet. That's dope. And there's a link to the GitHub here to how to put it together. It's crazy. Um, I'll share that in the show notes or whatever. I'm still geeking out about how stuff can move without the internet. Yeah, absolutely. It's like because yeah. because the question is like, oh, well, what if they cut off the internet or the power? Then what? You just got to be able to like somehow broadcast the script to Bitcoin, and then mm-hmm. Bitcoin could process it. And as long as there's miners around to process it, um, it would always go through. So whether you broadcast it, whatever it is that you do, if that transaction could get, you could even like. Um, this is like rare, like wild lands example, but like you could literally like SOS, like the broadcast, like the the hash ID or whatever, mm-hmm. and submit that over to uh, to the Bitcoin network somehow, uh, and and that could get it run, and then they could SOS back to you the receipt, right? So you know it's been confirmed or whatever. Like there's a lot of million things, but eight bucks. I saw somebody do like a card that you can tap and pay with Lightning, mm-hmm. like an NFC thing or whatever. Mm. Hey, listen, man, I'd rather be verified through my phone than to have this plastic card that people could just slap on shit to right. be able to. So, cool advancement. We are going to see a bunch of NFC stuff. MK4, yeah. uh, Cold Card is going to have NFC. That's going to be really cool. Um, but only, like, Air Gap is cool, which is, like, in certain instances. I don't know about having, like, cards and things that can kind of, like, make signing decisions for me. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I kind of think that just circles back to the shitty system we have right now. Well, let's pause right now. So if you if I pull up to the gas station and I go to swipe my card and someone has inserted a device in there that's going to like you know swipe my information, what happens when they do that to that device? I don't think that can happen either. Um, because I guess the, the the card would be the signature device, right? So they gotcha. could they could get your XPub like that, but they would need the co- the card to sign, sort of gotcha. like they need the hardware wallet to sign. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd like I don't want to knock it because I like advancements and I like yeah, yeah. things that are easier and lighter weight. And I do tap and pay, so I do understand. Mm-hmm. I've been tapping paying since like gingerbread or something like that. So mm. I understand the the benefits of being able to do that, but. Uh, not yet. Uh, not yeah. yet. I, I like the physical aspect of like scanning a QR code uh, or doing things like that. Um, confirming address, right? Like things that are like make me feel better about this transaction. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if, I don't know. Maybe I'll be balling enough somewhere where it's like, stats don't matter. Ding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but not yet. Stats matter. Soon, a lot. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Manifest that. Yeah. Soon. Nah. Yeah. Listen, the, the, this uh, <laughs> shock that's about to happen. Let's talk about it, man. So, yeah. Your boy's stock to flow. Yep. The only one of the glass nose guys. Is he a glass nose guy? He's a glass nose guy. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, let's just butcher them in that whole little area, even if he's yeah. not. Yeah, right? the prediction guys. There yeah, are a lot yeah. of people who have predicted. The weathermen. Yeah, the people who have predicted Bitcoin will be at a certain price on a certain month on a certain date, and a lot of the models were shattered. He's one of the only ones whose model is still kind of holding up. Um, but, you know, he'll probably be wrong, and like whatever you think the market is going to do, it typically doesn't do. You know what I mean? I think the reverse um, question is necessary. Why has he ha- why has he been the only one right? Yeah, I don't know. Because that could be the reason why he won't be wrong. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Excuse me. I don't follow those guys. I don't do any of that. But yeah. I, I I will have to give him kudos for um he he guessed forty seven end of August. Yeah. He guessed forty three end of September, uh, and he's guessing sixty three end of October. Yeah. Kind of looks like we're heading in that direction. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I think I don't remember if he did like a month by month, but I think his December one is like one thirty. So, am I hoping this guy is right? Santa's coming to town, baby. I don't know. I kind of don't. I want to keep stacking, man. I don't want him to be right. <laughs> yeah. No, bro. I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I don't have enough. But if if so. it's one thirty, then we all win, right? Like yeah. it's just that. Like even when we get to like let's say sixty six, it's probably less than that. But even anybody who's ever had Bitcoin at that point is going to be in the win, right? So it's like if we're at one hundred and thirty k, and there's people getting in right now at fifty because they had another chance, right? We went back to thirty, and they had another chance to. You're going to be very proud that you had that second chance. Um, it's going to be the same story. Oh, you bought Bitcoin when it was 4000 Now it's 40000 Oh, you bought Bitcoin at 40000 Yeah. Now it's 120000 I tried 17. 17 Listen, is like my pride. Like, I if, bought at 17. If you are not buying Bitcoin, <laughs> if you didn't, the, the best time to buy Bitcoin was 12 years ago. The second That's best right. time is today, right now, right, right now. now, right now. Get on an app, buy Bitcoin. Right now. Listen to, the, you know, listen to our podcast, figure out what to do with that Bitcoin, but start buying Bitcoin. Yeah, like it, people don't get it, man. Yeah, we don't sit here for an hour long winded and give example after example <laughs> of why this is gonna work. Yeah, um, it's just gonna work. Um, and don't take my word for it because I'm also skeptic, subjective, right? right? Like this I is all speculation. Yeah, this is I, not financial advice. This is the closest thing to the realness you can get, though. Um, and if it's not, then you know, I don't know if this applies, but like you know, when people say, um, "If this is not it, then I don't want to be right." I, Listen, I, yeah, I don't want to go back to fiat. If money does not inflate. And if like if this isn't right, then yeah, I, I don't want to be right. I just don't want to go back to fiat. Yeah. Uh, back to the rules, right? Twenty one million, mm-hmm. money go up, money's yeah. going up. Yeah, these guys are just relentless on this printing thing. Um, money goes up. They want to print another three point five trillion. Like, Did that get approved? That is that a new one? It's not approved. It's 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 their infrastructure bill. But listen, this if you study history and you look around at what's going on, forty percent of all money has been printed. If they get this three point five trillion like nothing, it's going to be followed up by more trillions, and we're literally going to watch them crash the monetary system to roll out their central bank coin. Yeah, which is going to possibly have an expiration limit, which is going to you know be censored and blocked if you're saying stuff online that you shouldn't. You know, so like this Bitcoin thing has to work. Yeah, um, and it, it the, is freedom in that regard. And just to lean off that, we're already at a, at a mark. But just to throw it in there, Visa has a universal payment channel that's supposed to be dropping. Let's um, go. We talk, no, what I'm saying is it's not let go, um, which is going to make room for CBDCs. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, I thought so, the other way around. So Visa's trying to get ahead of it, too. Um, what was the company we said a few episodes ago, that 2020 sign that we're going to drop? Western Union? Yeah. Right? So like now, now you're starting to see these signs. This yeah. is from Coindesk. Visa has unveiled a proposal for a universal payment channel to enable uh, intertropical... I can't say that word. Uh, but basically, cohesiveness 
between stable coins and CBDCs on different blockchains. Mm. That whole headline right there already got me saying, you playing with fire, motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. You playing with fire. You're going to roll out this coin like you just said, and now you're already getting with the major conglomerates to build infrastructure for these coins to be adopted right away. Mm-hmm. Sorry. This Bitcoin thing is going to work. And like Ben said, get it now. Get it now. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. I answer this question all the time. Uh, my barber asks me, a lot of people different ask me, hey, when's the right time to buy? Listen, I buy every day. Yeah. I buy every day. And I don't like doxing myself. I don't, I'm not around sharing how much I buy and pictures and stuff. But I promise you, any situation that I can get some more Bitcoin, I'm getting more Bitcoin. Um, and it's not because I'm a fanboy, uh, even though I love the technology and I am a fan of the technology. It's because of what you hinted on already. Mm-hmm. There's a historic pattern that's happening here. And history goes back around and repeats itself. It doesn't, you know, uh, what, what did Mark Twain said? It, uh, uh, it's not the same, but it often rhymes, mm. right? So what's about to come could be all overblown. We could all be thinking about this too hard. We could all be doing, but we, we history has shown us that it's not. Mm-hmm. Shit will go down. Uh, this is a little bit related, but not related. Like I was, I was working out this morning and I got some mirrors in front of me, right? And then sometimes I kind of like recite stuff to myself to like, why do you work out, right? Mm-hmm. And then usually it's, you know, a lot of numerous things to, you know, lose some weight, get into some shape or whatever. This morning was the first morning that I looked at myself uh, and I wasn't talking to nobody in specific, but I was like, I'm working out so that if I have to get into a fight with you, I'm not going to lose. And that doesn't mean anything in the moment because I'm not trying to fight nobody. I'm not trying to do whatever. But if the decision ever came down where I need to, let's just use funny words, bare knuckle brawl, Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about a six pack. I don't give a shit about looking good in the mirror. I don't give a shit about none of that. I care about, can I hold my own and maybe save my life and maybe save the life of my loved ones if I can actually win this altercation. That's very extremist to think. But that's what I'm on right now. Yeah, just being prepared for it. History's very gruesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I've heard some people say that we live in the safest time of all time and people question that. The reason they say that and the reason people question it is because they haven't even dug through history. We are privileged, extremely lucky to be able to talk shit in front of a microphone and be able to do so without being in a gulag somewhere. So go get your six pack. That's not my emphasis on how to motivate your life. But to me, it's super important that people understand you're doing this for survivalistic reasons, which is why our ancestors did the majority of the things they did. They didn't do this to front. They didn't do this for clout. They didn't do this for any of these things. They did it to survive. Somewhere along the line, We started to do things for altruistic reasons and outside reasons that's completely skewed our purpose. And this Bitcoin whole thing, it's an opportunity for us to redeem ourselves and to be able to get back to business uh, when it comes to like the beat of life. But if it continues to go down, as history has shown us with this fiat system, the world's going to burn. It's going to go down to the ground because it's done that numerous amounts of times. So now my question to you is with your finances, with your health, with your security. How prepared are you? Mm -hmm. I could be talking shit. I hope I'm talking shit. Yeah. How prepared are you? Because I am an avid reader of history. Yeah. I mean, the Facebook shutdown went for six hours and like people were reevaluating life. You know what I mean? And that's like a a social media thing. Never mind a bank account. Never mind your savings. You know what I mean? Going to zero, et cetera. Uh, Yeah. So it's, it's much more serious. It was a big corner that was going around saying, and I think about this all the time. I was actually, um, uh, last week, I think I was at like the school picking the kids up and, and I was thinking about it. But he brought up in, in a text what summarized my thought, which is you look around and you realize how many of these people can handle that? Mm-hmm. How many of these people know what's about to come? It, it's like that matrix feel. Like you're just walking around and you're just wondering like, can you, if you wake up tomorrow morning, are you going to be able to take what's about to come around the corner, whether it's health-wise, whether it's financial-wise, whether... And, and unfortunately, I mean, I'm, at that point, I'm just being judgmental, right? So there's no accuracy in my judgment. I kind of feel like there's not a lot of people that are going to have hope. Yeah. So, yeah, go to the gym every single day and, and try to get your glutes to look all great. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in there. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, and you have to tussle for your life, and this is just an easy example because a lot of things can happen. Even if you have to, like, feed your family, you're going to need a physical stature, a physical structure to be able to endure and to be able to last long. Um, And that's the same thing for money. Like, Mm -hmm. if I'm going to be able to survive 
let's say the apocalypse. That's a very loose word. But if I'm going to be able to survive the fiat apocalypse and continue to the other side, Bitcoin is my preparedness, right? And, and if that doesn't work, then we got bigger problems. Mm-hmm. But I'm just off of the strength of what we were talking about earlier. How can you stop it? And how this like idea has come and now it just can't be slowed down. I think I'm on the right train. Mm-hmm. And I think you're on the right train. And I think people that we care about are on the right train. I think you guys are on the right train for watching the show. And this is our, our last train to Paris. It's the only opportunity we have. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to go back to the fiat world. I don't want to be right. Title of this should be Last Train to Paris Part 2. Uh, yeah. Bomb. Yeah. Or oh, I don't want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, remind me of that. And we'll add it. Yeah, I always yeah, forget yeah. when we say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you got you. anything else? No, I'm with you, man. It's been a really, really loaded week with a bunch of stuff. There's some stuff here that we didn't get to. Um, we appreciate you guys as always. Uh, super bullish on Bitcoin right now for numerous reasons. But buy Bitcoin now is the best thing you can do. The second best thing you can do is head on over to YouTube. Check out this 4K experience. Be able to hit that subscribe button, that bell, so you get notified. Leave us some comments so we can interact. Uh, you can correct Jose because I'm sure I'm wrong like 100 times an episode Same and here. nobody ever says anything. So call me out in the comments. Um, if you listen to podcasts, you can check us out on all your podcast platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple, all those good ones. If you are ahead of the curve and you're on Lightning and you have your own node, or if you have a Breeze app and you're funding it through your strike and you want to send them over some stats, then you can go over to your favorite podcast player. Um, there's a few of them out there that are really good, uh, and you'll be able to stream us some sets, and we appreciate that value. Uh, we got so much things in works for you yes, guys. Sir. We appreciate you guys as always. Episode 39. Right, bro. About to hit the 40, man. That's Let's awesome. Let's go. Catch you guys next week. Later. Peace.